Hello, Bob. These are the books I bought last week at the veteran store. Let's get right into them. Most of them are classic, antique, vintage to antique, but this one obviously, obviously isn't wanted. The Search for Nazis in America, Howard Blum. It's a true story, a shocking expose of governmental scandal and cover-up. It is also a compelling, exciting detective story about four Nazis who came to this country after World War II, the life they led here and the men who tracked them down. The story of each of these Nazis reveals a record of stolen government files, unexplainable court and immigration service delays. Yeah, they brought Nazis here because our government's run by Nazis now. North by East. And I bought this because of this. I don't know what it says. Yay, Omer, Alberta Stumple. Don't know who she is, but I'm a fan of this book. Which it now came out, and I will take care of it. I collect these, bruv. That's a nice one to have. North by East, especially since this book is sellable. I will take it out and sell it, unless there's some reason I should keep it. 1930 by Rockwell Kent. I don't know what it's about, bruv, but it's got these weird little... Look at this leapy nude man. I don't know what it means, bruv. But I have it now, so there we go. Stanley in Africa. You see, the front is, is falling out, bruv, so good luck selling that. The Paladin of the 19th Century, a succinct and correct history of the travel and exploration of Henry M. Stanley, 1889. Lord Stanley and his cup? I don't know. Hoping there'd be some old Confederate bills or something, bro. That would be worth billions of dollars, but assuming that Confederate bills are worth the thousands of dollars, bro. I don't know what is the most expensive bill, but I was hoping it was in there, and it's not. Legends in Law. Of Southern Illinois. I assume this is somewhere near Missouri. Or what else would be in there? I don't really know shit about Southern Illinois, bruv. The Devil's Bake Oven. A deserted cemetery. An abandoned mausoleum. This may actually be near... Louisville? Or am I thinking of the wrong place, bruv? I don't know anymore. I don't care. I bought it because it's worth money. Roar Shark Responses in Old Age. This one's curious just because how many books do you find on Roar Sharks? Or Cook Sharks, for that matter. <laughs> Roar Shark. I assume it's the Roar Shark Splashes. And the individual has become less capable and verbalisms may mask the extent of his disability. Is that what they used Rorschach for? I don't know. I just bought it. American Negroes. A handbook. This fucking book is falling apart, but it's a curious book. American Negroes, a handbook by Edwin Embury. 1942, We the People of the United States. A New Race to Brown Americans. Let's see what this says, bro. A new race is growing up in America. Its skin is brown. It has in its veins the blood of three principal branches of man. Black, white, yellow, brown. 
The new race numbers 13 million in the United States and many more million in the West Indies and in Central and South America. It is a fresh biological mixture. (laughs) What are we saying, bro? In its culture, it is also new, having been almost entirely cut off from the ancient African ohm, and yet having developed somewhat differently from the white American pattern. Black forefathers of the new race were among the first settlers of the new world. In 1619, according to John Smith's General History, there arrived in Jamestown a Dutch man of Boer that sold us 20 niggers. Just So just 12 years after the establishment in Virginia, the first permanent British colony in America, and a few months before the Mayflower landed, the pilgrims at Plymouth, the beginnings of the new race were made. These 20, we'll just call them African Americans, were followed by ever-increasing shipments from Africa over a period of two centuries. Alice's Adventures Underground. And this is a facsimile edition based upon the original from 1964 by University Microfilms in Ann Arbor. Early in 46, I read the New York Times that a manuscript entitled Alice's Adventures Underground would come up for auction in the Park Bennett. Burnett Galleries in New York in April. It was a forerunner. All right, well, we have it now, bro. The fortunes and misfortunes of Mal Flanders. I believe, like that other book I just showed you. Well, more boobs, bro. What have we got here? Is that what Daniel Defoe's books were about? Boobs. What is this? Hey, look, there's the cover. Profusely illustrated by John Allen Maxwell. Let's see if we have a other front cover, bruv. That increases its value, even though I didn't buy it for increased value. We got lots of naked women. I never was in such a consternation in my life. There was no room to question the truth of it. I knew his clothes, I knew his horse, and I knew his face. I guess you did, bruv. Bruv Chica. I bought this mainly for this, this little book label. Economy Book and Magazine Shop, Syracuse, New York. We'll put Mal back in there. Why is she naked in there, I ask you? I don't mean it in a tawdry way, bruv. The Panama Canal. Panama? Panama Canal, bruv. Life on the Zone. The Locks, the Locks. I have another book about the Panama. Panama Canal. In this hall, that one's from 1915. Is this the other one, bruv? No. Where's the other one, bruv? I will come up with it soon. What is this? Let's go with this one. The Power of Religion of the Mind, Retirement, Affliction, and Approach of Death by Lindley Murray, 1860. And I mean... I don't really care about religion, but how can you pass up a book from 1864 dollar, bruv? Actually, it was a dollar one. Now it's mine, bruv. The Alcoholic Republic, an American tradition. Between 1790 and 1840, Americans drank more alcoholic beverages, nearly a half pint of hard liquor per man each day. Than at any other time in our history, the nation's citizens were in a curtain degree seasoned, noted one astute Scotsman. In a charming history of America's first 50 years, William J. Rohrer Ball creates a vignette of vignette of American life that may itself become an, as identifying a piece of, 
of Americana is the picture of Benjamin Franklin with his kite. I just want to find that other book. Where the fuck is it? There it is. Now I can move on. Panama by Al... Oh, look at this. By Albert Edwards. Whoa, whoa, whoa. John Pebble. The Darien Disaster, Scotland. Subscribed half its national capital in establishing the something trading company and colony in Panama. Whoa, whoa. This guy's coming on. I'm going to turn you off, little bruv. The early dawn of Christian life in England in the olden time. It's not a very old book, bruv. What year? 1864. It is the high office of history to restore the past to a new life. Elizabeth Charles. don't know what it's about. Maybe one year I'll read it. Why Priests Should Wed by Justin D. Fulton. <laughs> this one claims it's from 1888, but I find it hard to believe, bruv, if it is. Maybe it is. Anyways, I bought it to sell it, and I will sell it. Because I like this cover. Why Priest Should Wed by Fold. Industrial Biography by Smiles. Another 1864 book. Iron Workers and Tool Makers by Samuel Smiles. At least that's how I'm saying it. It could be Smealies, Smealess. Didn't really look this book up, but I would not pass up a book from 1864. Addresses and Essays by G. Frank Lidstrom, Lidston, Lidston, 1892, Benz, Renz, and Henry, Louisville, Kentucky. Toledo Medical Library Association, bro. It's got skulls, I believe it has. A vagina in there too, bro, somewhere. That there was a vagina. Skulls and vaginas. There you go, bro. I don't know what that cauliflower looking stuff was in her butthole, but I guess it was gonorrhea. If you ever meet a woman and she's got cauliflower in her butthole, it's probably some gonorrhea, bro. The Body Reader, Social Aspects of the Human Body. Not a particular fan of 40-inch fingernails, alien skulls, totems, or tattoos, but the book has some value. Body image, preeminence of the right hand, tattoos, the naked versus the nude, garment terms. Yeah, that, that shit right there. I will never understand it, bro. I understand it's a tribal thing, but then you got fucking white guys and Lansing doing this shit like they're in some tribe, bro. <laughs> I'm just like, bro, you got us. To What's that? It's a human pickle, bro. What is it? I've never seen it. With body paint and headdresses, bro, they look like human pickles. I've never seen it, bro. I understand if you're living out in the jungle, bro, you probably have nothing else to do but turn yourself into a human pickle. Variations of chess sacrification design. And I'm a Wata woman. 
I don't like that. What's that? It's just like embossment on the skin, bruv. I can't abide by it, bruv. Anyway, there's a good one. Salad for the solitary. That ain't the entire title, but inscribed to Washington Irving. Salad for the solitary by an epicure. This one seems actually interesting. Dying words of distinguished men. Supposedly a cookbook, bro, but I didn't see any recipes of anything in there. In our analysis of nothing, we ought to not forget its first syllable, no. The second syllable, thing, may speak for itself. Anything is not nothing, but a thing is a thing. This is a self-evident proposition. A contemporary has so ably discussed the little negation that we take the liberty of presenting his strictures to the reader. Interesting read, bruv. Goethe's Iphigenie, which the introduction is written. There he is, Goethe. As you can see, the text is still in German, so it's useless to me, but the explication, I suppose, I could read it if I want to learn to read German, but I won't. But when you find a book from Goethe from 1896, you probably should get it, bro. This Marina by Ella Wheeler Wilcox is just trite poetry. She was quite popular back in the day. There's a little carnation, bro. Her poetry was very, very, very beloved. To Maureen from Barbara Dratz, April 30th, 1933. It's got a nice cover to it. I like it. I like the embossed hard covers. Eric von Donneken's Miracles of the Gods. He's the author of The Chariot of the Gods. A new look at the supernatural, which... It's always a nice thing to add to your collection, bruv. <sighs> the Seth material. The extraordinary true story of a personality who has dictated over 5,000 pages on reincarnation, clairvoyance, and the universe beyond the five senses which I figured would be very interesting. The book's not in very good condition, but it's probably worth 15 bucks, so instead of buying it... What is this lady up to? Young mm. enlarged in some of his concepts shortly before he died. He has changed a good many of them since then. That's funny, bruv. You hear the irony in that? He changed a bunch of his concepts after his death. So yeah, Jane Roberts. I'm assuming that was Jane herself. Droll stories from Balzac. Very droll. Not sure about honoring the Balzac's life. But these are his droll stories, bro. The vern venial sin, how the good man Bruin took a wife, how the sensual, cynical struggled with his wife's modesty, the devil's air, the merry jests. I believe there's boobs in this book too, bro, somewhere. Maybe I made that up. But there were some illustrations. Maybe they're just dirty books. And what's this, bro? Bowels, milk of magnesia. It's Dr. Bainbridge, danger of being too innocent. The succubus, Mary Viker of Meldon, danger of being too innocent. I 
Anyway, book interests me, bruv. The Devil's Virtuosos, General German Generals at War, eight nineteen forty to nineteen forty-five. Obviously, it's about the Nazis. Like said, Jim, bruv. Success with small fruit. I've always wanted to grow a peach tree. I don't know if that's part of small fruits. That's probably large fruits, but this will give you a how to grow some fruit gardens from 1881. Very interesting book, bro. Preparation of the soil. Lived in Cleveland. The Harp Weaver and Other Poems by Edna St. Vincent Millay. Who is one of my favorite female poets, probably behind Sylvia Plath. This too has a ex libris plate. This one ain't coming out though, bro, without some force. That's a big one for Ralph J. Burton. The Ballad of the Harp Weaver. Son said, my mother. I was knee high, you'd need of clothes to cover you, and not a rag have I. There's nothing in the house to make a boy breeches, nor shears to cut a cloth. Most of her best poetry is her sonnets. If I grow bitterly like a gnarled and stunted tree, bearing harshly of my youth, puckered fruit that sears the mouth, if I make of my dawn boughs, an inhospitable house out of which I never pry, Towards the water in the sky under which I stand and hide and hear the day go out by outside. It is that a wind too strong bent my back when I was young. It is that I fear the rain, lest it blister me again. It came into her mind, seeing how the snow was gone and the brown grass exposed again in clothespins. Shut up. Mary Dale. And Joe Edwards. Collected sonnets, bruv, from Edna St. Vincent Millay. I see so clearly now my similar years. What's this of death from you who will never die? Very strange that I found this book, bruv, because the night before I went to this store, I had a dream, bruv, and one of the sonnets was in it, bruv fact it was the whole it was the whole dream time does not bring relief bruv you have all you all have lied you told me time would ease me of my pain that was in the book or in the dream, bruv. And then I woke up. It was like 4.30 in the morning. I could not sleep afterwards. Not sure why, but I stayed up to about 9.30 and then went back to sleep. And when I woke and after my morning rituals, I went to the store and these books were all there. It was a little bit surprising to find that, but it was there. Don't know what it means. Well, I kind of know what it means, but I don't want to speak of it, bruv. This book I bought twice. It's by Gwen Frostick, who you have featured previously. 1958, Benzonia, Michigan. A walk with me, and she put, does her own little woodcuts and all this. Shit, I've sold sold the other books I bought. 
of hers, and I'll probably sell these. The Princess Marries the Page by Edna St. Vincent. As you can see, there's a letter to a woman named Inin. Her name was Inin, Inin Sladen. And she apparently won a contest at the Liggett School, which is in Gross Point. And this was the poem that she was the prize poem in 1933. Was that the year this book was written? No, 32. So she got this a year after she won, or after it came out, she won. Her father wrote the poem in here that she won the prize with, and she obviously left it behind when she moved out and married. And as the note says, this would be nice for your daughter. And it would be nice, bruv. I did a little research on her, and she uh, married a, <clears throat> a naval man. This last book, bruv, the Most Hated Man in America, John William Clouser, also known as the Florida Fox. And curiously enough, I have been researching a story, a local story, and he of a suspected slasher and giggler, a man who giggled and laughed as he was slicing women up. The problem was this man never existed. Not this man. He totally existed, bruv. But the man who was a suspect was part of a, a large hoax of a woman who I believe was trying to get attention either from her husband or she was making excuses for why she had done something. And the slasher was blamed. Anyway, this guy was brought up in the interviews of the woman and that one of the free press, which is a local paper, asked her if she'd ever seen this man since he was on the 10 most wanted list at the time. And she goes, that's him, that's him. But it wasn't him, bruv. And she later recanted that and said, no, nah, he looks different. But this guy, he was a former cop and he was suspected of ties to the underworld and he supposedly was robbing people or something. I don't know how that gets you on the 10th. Most wanted, but he escaped from some place. He was put in a mental institution. And at the time that this supposed slasher was going on, this guy was on the run for the FBI for... He was on the run for 10 years, the longest ever in the FBI's wanted... 10 most wanted list. And, yeah, he was a suspect for a short time. In this case, only because the woman had identified him, even though the case turned out to be uh, mass hysteria. And there was apparently no slasher slash giggler. This guy eventually turned himself in and said, I'm re hit rehabilitated, bruv. But I think they still sent his ass back to prison. Anyway, bruv, that's all.